Today we're going to be making this procedural algae material in Blender, and I'll be showing you how to do that step by step. So step one is going to be to delete default cube, and then go ahead and set your camera up aiming towards the center like this, and then I just have a point light set up up here. After that, we're going to add a mesh, go to add Icosphere, and subdivide it with five subdivisions, and then shade it smooth. After that, your scene is all set up nice and neat, and then we go into render view here. We get this nice shadows, and if you need to look at my EV settings, just go ahead and turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and green space reflections. We're going to be doing the editing in EV, and then at the end, I'll switch it to cycles so we can see what the final render looks like, just because my computer works faster in EV. So then, after that, we're going to hop over to the shading tab, and then we're just going to go ahead and slide these to the side to get rid of those workspaces, and then we're going to slide this one up so that the node takes up the whole thing. And then we're going to slide over to the right, switch this one to 3D viewport. So now we go to zero, we go to the camera view, and we can go to rendered preview. And then we have our scene all set up. And for the sake of y'all you know, being able to see things better, I'm going to move that to the side and this side as well. You don't have to set up your scene or your workspace like this. I just do it so that the video keeps track of all the little details in the nose so you can see everything going on. So then we're going to add a new material, and you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it algae. And then we got the principal BSDF and the material output. So step one, and make sure you hit save as you go, so in case your computer crashes for no good reason. And so shift A. All right, obviously first. If you don't have the node Wrangler add-on, you need to add it. Because it's not, it's free, it's everything. Just go preferences, search for node Wrangler, and then check box, refresh your settings, and then you'll be good to go. So shift A, search, and we're going to add in a noise texture. And then with this noise texture, we're just going to put it here, and we're going to hit Control T, and then that will add a mapping and texture coordinate, and we're going to put the object into the vector. After that, we're going to take this noise texture, and we're going to duplicate it twice, because we always want to have three or so levels of detail in all of our materials. And so yeah, so Control Shift D, and what Control Shift D does is it keeps the input coming into it, whereas if I just Shift D, it doesn't keep it. So Control Shift D, and then we keep it like that. So now we've got three levels of detail. And as always, first, these are going to be organizing the bump. And I'll be showing you how to do that just momentarily. I'm just going to set these up in vertical fashion like so. It's a little bit messy, but it's fine. There's not going to be that many nodes. So. We're going to hit Control shift and left click on this first noise texture and we get this. And so to be able to mess with these settings a bit, we're going to add a shift A and search for a color ramp and put that factor into the factor. And then now with the viewer node, Control shift left click and then make sure we're viewing the color into the viewer node up here. So with this noise texture, this one's going to be the bigger details. So we're going to go ahead and switch this to a 2.3. A detail, we're going to switch it to a 10 and the roughness to a point 0.4. After that, we're going to take this black and we're just going to move it up a bit so that we can get a lot more contrast going on here so that we get, the because the black and this uh, noise texture is the lower parts of the bump and then the white is height, represents height. So if we put it just to the middle here, about 3 point, eh, about a point 0.4 or something like that, we can type it 0.4. I'm going to go with like something like a 3.95, just this doesn't make a huge difference, it's just something that's pretty close. Then, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to, con that's the big details, like, if we let's go ahead and look at it, like I said, we have, like, the big splotches, and we're, the next one's going to be the medium details and then the small details. So now we're going to control shift left click on this one, and we're just going to copy this color ramp and put it down here. Now we're viewing this. Because these are going to be bigger details, we're going to move the scale up to a 10. As you can see, I mean, these are the medium details, so the details get a little bit smaller, and then... Well, I'm also going to up the detail in this because the smaller it is, the more it's got usually got going on in it. And we're going to put the roughness up to 0.62. So here there's a lot of stuff going on. And that's what we want to see in the as the details get smaller and smaller. And then again, we're going to keep the rough, the color ramp somewhere about 3.5 because there's not going to be as much of a contrast as it the details get smaller. So the big details, um, big contrast, but little uh, difference in them, like so. Like there's little tiny bits, it's bigger bits, but more contrast. And as you get smaller, 
there's more going on, but there's less contrast. And so then we're just going to go ahead and shift D this color ramp again, put the factor into here, control shift and left click again on this color ramp. And then we are going to up the scale even more on this one. We're going to get up to a 15 and the detail we're going to put it at 10. And we could actually go ahead and put this in 14 if you want to be consistent with the escalation of things. And the final one, I ended up using a 10 though. So that's what I'll use here. Actually, let's go with 14, why not? It'll probably look better. And then we're gonna go with a one on the roughness. Ooh, let's see. That's why I went with the, interesting. So you can either test around with going with a smaller detail and like a 10 and then higher roughness, or you can go with a little bit less roughness, but higher detail. I ended up going with this in the final product. So that's what I'll go with here. And because there's less contrast, we're going to move this back even more, probably back to close to a 0.1, about right here. So there's just a little bit of roughness going on here. There's a little bit of contrast, but there's a lot of small details. So now that we've got all this set up, this is going to represent our bump. Now we just have to combine it together. So what we're going to do is we're going to shift A and search for a mix RGB. And then to combine these, we're going to use the big thing right here for the factor. And we're going to use this for color one and this color for color two. So we can control shift left click on this, it load, and it's looking something like this. And this isn't exactly what we want because it's mixing them and it's doing it in sort of a weird way. So what we're going to want to do is switch the mix over here and we're going to switch it to add. And this is just going to add these together. And then now we get a lot more of what we are looking for. And so, yeah. Anyways, this is about our bump, how our bump's working. But this is only doing the medium and small details. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add we're going to shift A and we're going to add a bump node. So if we plug this into here, control shift left click on it, and wait for it to kick in, we have all the medium and the small details going on here, but we still, we don't have the big details doing anything at all, other than showing us where to put the medium and small details. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another bump node. So copy this by hitting Shift D. We're going to put this into the normal from the first one into the normal of the second one. Then we're going to plug the color from the big one into the height from the bump. Okay. So now it's looking something like this. We've got a lot of stuff going on here and it's frankly a little bit too big on the um, uh, the little bumps because we don't want the little bumps to be um, uh, making a huge difference because they're supposed to be small detail. So we're gonna, instead of switching the strength, we're gonna switch the distance to a point two. So what this does is it makes the big bump have a much larger effect than the small ones, which is how things actually work in real life. And so that's what we're trying to do here. So that's step one is all done. All we have to do now is plug this normal into the other normal uh, of the principal BSDF. And then we can control shift left click the BSDF node and it's looking like this right now. The texture is looking really nice and why I mean texture, I mean like the uh, tactileness of it. I don't know how to say that better. But now basically all we need to do is add in the roughness and the color. And the roughness is really easy. We just have to use one node for it. All we have to do for the roughness is drag in this right here from this node and then take that into the roughness. That's literally all we do. And what that does is it's going to give some shiny spots and then some not as shiny spots because that's how algae works because usually it when you have algae it's in a wet environment and so there will be little parts of it that are shinier than others or more slimy i guess even if it's not in a wet environment and so there'll be parts that are shinier and parts that aren't and also something if you're in your render settings over here if you have your uh things set to filmic you can leave it on filmic but if you do have it on filmic something to do is make sure you press clamp on this. If you're on standard colors, it won't make a difference, but if you're not, then it will make a pretty big, it will make a, not a big difference, but it'll make a small difference. I could explain why, but I'm not going to. So I would just hit clamp, no matter whether you're using filmic or standard colors. So let's go ahead and hit clamp on that to make it look better. 
So next, all we have to do is have two more noise textures, two color ramps, and then we're done. And this is for the color. So we're gonna hit Shift A, and we're adding noise texture up here. And we're gonna move the vector into the vector. And then Control Shift D, second one. Voila, and we got this. So this is going to be our color. So we're gonna have two different colors. We're gonna have one that's more greenish, and then one that's more yellowish brown just like in real algae. So on the top one, we're gonna leave this at a five. We're gonna move the detail up to a 12. Actually, I'll control shift left like this so we can see what's going on here. And so it looks like this right now. I'm gonna move the roughness to it. We're gonna leave it at 0.5. And then distortion, we're gonna mess with it. So now let's add our color ramp. So shift A, search for a color ramp, and plug that in right here. So this is gonna be our greener one. And so we're going to go ahead and add a third color uh, node in the middle here. Oops. And Adobe. So for the colors on these, the middle one is going to be the color that shows up the most. And we're going to want to be using a lighter, uh, almost sort of yellowish white. This one. Just get it something about right here. And this one is going to be a bright green. So we're going to go ahead and go up here. We're going to, this one's going to be pretty saturated, but it's also going to be um, uh, very bright, as in white. So we're just going to up that quite a bit. And then we're going to leave it all the way on the edge, and this one's going to be perfectly in the middle at a 0.5, if you're a little learning about positions on these. So in this one over here, we're going to make this uh, sort of a darker greenish brown. It's going to be sort of like in the middle of the value scale is actually pretty dark in reality, but we're going to be using about 0.25, something like that. And then maybe just with the hue a little bit, get a little bit yellowish brown, but not, not a brown, but like a yellow green, something like that. And then we'll bring it in a little bit just so that we can, you can sort of see when I play with it, that it's sort of, showing up a little bit. You don't want it to show up too much because then it's very obvious. You want it to just be fading in a little bit. And then so about a 0.82 is where I have mine at. So then we can go ahead and we can copy this down and then we'll plug the factor into the factor. Control shift left click. And it's going to look the exact same until we switch up these settings and the colors. So we're going to leave this at a 5. We're going to move the detail up to 12. And the roughness we're going to leave it at 0.5. So now for the colors on this one, this one's going to be the yellower and much more brown one. So to start off with this color, this one's going to be a darker version of the top right one. So we're going to go ahead and use the color picker to select it. We're going to darken it, and then we're going to move it, the hue a little bit towards the yellow a little bit more. And I'm actually going to bring it up a bit so we can sort of see it coming through there. Because if it's on the very edge, you can barely see it. And then you bring it up and you can see it a little bit more. And then... The central one is going to be, once again, it's going to be a darker uh, version of the center one here. So darken it a bit, and then we're going to actually switch the hue a little bit more towards the green, and then saturation up a little bit, or quite a bit actually. We'll move the saturation up to about here, and then make it slightly greener. And use something like that. Then this last one, this one's going to be very yellow. We're going to do something like this, and then might whiten it a little bit. And we're going to leave it something like that. And we're going to leave the position, we're going to bring it back a little bit so it's not too obvious. And so now we've got this color going on. This one's the very bright, and this darker, more algae looking green. So it's like main colors and highlight sort of a thing. So now we just have to figure out how we want to combine these. So to do that, we're going to shift A, add in the mix RGB. We're going to leave this one on mix, we'll turn on clamp. And for the factor, we're going to be wanting to plug in this node down here into the factor. So what that's looking like is if I control shift left click, and if I change color two to black, it's looking something like this. And so what this means is that the 
where the black where, where the bottom color is, whatever plugs into there is going to be showing up on the blacker areas, and whatever plugs into the top is going to be showing up on the whiter areas. And because it's mixed, and none of these are solid white or solid black, it's going to sort of blend the two colors together in a really nice way. So to do that, we're going to plug in bottom into the bottom and the top into the top. And then give it a second to load. And this is sort of what the color is looking like right now. We might play with this in a little bit. We'll see what the final thing is looking like. We'll plug the base color into the base color. And then control shift left click on the principal BSDF and see what we've got going here. So currently, it's not looking bad. The color is pretty good. But the bump is a little bit off. I think it's a little bit too much maybe. Actually, it's not that off if I'm being honest. The bump's looking pretty good. Because if we, let me just pull up some Google real quick. All right, so if you go ahead and you Google some algae on rocks, you can see how bumpy it is in some of these. And you can go ahead and look at the different ones to figure out how bumpy you want your algae to be looking. But I went for something that's a lot bumpier because I'm going to be putting it in a swamp scene that I'm actually working on with a wizard hut and sort of a thing going on there. So yeah, if you want to decrease the bump, like I said, it's really easy to do. You can switch this down, you can pick like a 0.5 maybe, and it gets a lot more subtle. You can even bring the big one all the way down to a 0.2, and then you get something a lot smoother. And something like this, right? This is actually looking really good. And so you can take the bump down to like 0.2, like I said, and then you get a lot less strong if you don't want it to be so contrasty. I kind of like the contrasty look, depending on what, it depends on what you're going for, obviously, so you can change that as you want. Anyways, that is how you make a procedural moss material in Blender. And so yeah.